remember that we have a lot to appreciate at this point in time. Um, this is the first time that people have found innovative ways to really connect and reconnect with friends and loved ones that they haven't heard from in quite a while. And it's truly a magnificent thing. So let's just take the time in the midst, midst of the craziness going on to appreciate the small things that we have right now. You know, just go outside, just take a breath and have one of those meditative wusa moments. It really does help. So, last episode, I made a suggestion about social distancing parties using social media. And I think I have one more to add to it. And I should have thought about this last episode, but I think this is something that is a little near and dear to our hearts, especially if you have very unique palates and appetites. And I'm thinking a cooking show social distancing party now yes you could easily go on tv or on youtube or any social media and take a look at cooking shows and snippets and everything but i think we can do one better with this and i think we can do it by introducing everybody's favorite recipe during this cooking experience so one person would have control of the room, show everyone how to cook their favorite meal step by step, and then the next time another person would do it, and so on and so forth. This allows for creativity in the kitchen, this allows to broaden your horizon as a cook, and it's something to do that will bring more people together. So if anyone is interested in doing something like this, please let me know. I will plug it every single time I get on here to do a podcast. So, <clears throat> tonight's subject. And you're going to hear me say this quite a bit. Self-identifying conformity. Now, the reason why I say self-identifying conformity is due to the fact that during our path of trying to figure out who we are as individuals, trying to express ourselves, our creativity, our voice, trying to analyze everything and make the right decisions with our free will, there are times where we fit into certain categories. And we all know the different categories. I like to consider them as subcultures of the experience of becoming an individual. And we're all within those subcultures. I mean, even us as podcasters, we're in a subculture. Because in order for us to find our individuality, we are using a medium that many people around the world use and it allows us to express ourselves. So this, in fact, is a way of self-identifying conformity. Now, the kicker of self-identifying conformity, or finding that conformity is within individuality, all starts with us growing up. And the key place where this happens is junior high and high school. Now, we've all been there. We have friends or us ourselves have fit into different cliques and social statuses while in junior high and high school. Now, let's say the most popular ones, starting off with actually the popular kids, starting uh, going on with the athletic kids, especially if your town is a huge football town like my hometown is, uh, followed by band geeks, popular kids, um, goths, troublemakers, um, gangbangers, once more. My part of Texas was pretty rough. Um, all those are different categories and subcultures. 
and where people are identifying themselves as. And that is part of the conformity. It even starts before that. Now say this with me. When I grow up, we have all said this whenever we were kids, whenever we were able to form words, whenever we looked at things with a bright-eyed enthusiasm and a sense of adventure, we've all looked up to different people and professions as heroes, things that we want to be able to achieve and strive for whenever we get up to that age. Right then and there, that is us forming ourselves, telling us that we want to be part of this without us actually understanding and comprehending during that time, we as individuals are expressing that we want to be part of something. We want that label. We want to be a doctor. We want to be a lawyer. We want to be a chef. We want to wear a uniform and be in the military. That is our journey. We, as individuals, we who are trying to identify ourselves out to the world, we fit in to these categories and subcultures willingly. The reason why is because it's something that we are a part of. We feel kindred spirits when there are other people who identify the same way we do. Not because it's just a group of people that think the same way. No, it's because as individuals and as we're trying to find our identity, we have people that we can lean on in order to understand what makes us us even more. Now, I'm sure everyone can count on their fingers the number of extremely close friends that they have, even from junior high and high school, that they still talk to to this day, that you still have a kindred connection with. All because, as individuals, y'all connected through one or a few things like I actually keep in contact with quite a few of my friends that were cheerleaders yes Mr. Cheshire back in high school was a cheerleader and I'm not afraid to say it I was also in band I communicate with my close friends that were in band with me yes I will admit I am a band geek But it's those labels and being willing to conform to those labels as an individual that give you more of that fraternal sense that this is not just a group of random people that have a passion for the same thing, but it becomes more of a family of sorts. So let's continue on, actually, because there's a lot that we can look at in terms of self-identifying conformity. Now, it, it goes way further than junior high, high school, even college. Let's take a look as adults. How is it that we identify as individuals while trying to fit into certain subcultures? So a couple of examples here. Let's start off with one of the subjects I will never touch on this show, politics. Within politics, you can identify as a Republican and see their views because their views match your views as an individual, as a person. You could be Democrat. You could be a Libertarian. You could be Independent. You could be an American Socialist. Um, What was that? There was one... Um, God, they made a spoof of it on Saturday Night Live before. Um, whenever I think about it, I'll actually bring it up in the next podcast. But 
you can tell with just political standpoint that if your views begin matching with other people's views, you will gravitate more towards that side, which it's perfectly okay to do so. Even in terms of the second subject that I will never cover on here, religion. You can identify as a Christian. You can be um, a Muslim. You can be Jewish. You can be Taoist. You can be neo-pagan. You could be a Satanist. All because these, these cultures, these ideologies fit within how we want to express ourselves as individuals. And it's perfectly fine to have whatever political alliance that you believe in. It's okay to worship and be spiritual the way that you want to be. Even in terms of how we distinguish ourselves within romantic relationships. You can be straight. You can be gay. You can be lesbian. You can be bi. You can be transgendered. You can be omnisexual, demisexual, pansexual. You can be um, polyamorous. You can be asexual. There are so many ways that we identify ourselves even within that point. And the thing is, not only do we identify ourselves as, that, as, as those ways personally, other people do. And this gives us a sense of that fraternal or sororitic bonding that we look for whenever we're individuals and we have questions about the path that we are going down. It is okay to have self-identifying conformity because this allows us to grow and mature even further as an individual. Now, um, real quick pause because I want to say this right off the bat. Mr. Cheshire and Cheshire's place, a looking glass into logical madness, believes that love is love. Spiritual belief is spiritual belief. We do not judge here whatsoever because we believe that individuals, humans, should be able to think and feel however they want. But there is a certain line of thinking however you want, especially whenever it spews out poisonous hate. Here on this podcast, we will never discuss anything that is demeaning towards a culture, a religion, a belief of any sort. Now, with that PSA done, let's continue on. So, it is okay to conform as long as the conformity does not take control of who you are as an individual. And we have seen this before. We have seen the hardcore believers of certain things. Um, I hate using this term, but fanatics. We have seen fanatics to different subcultures where it has to be this way or no way. There's no leeway on how you should think, how you should act, what you should believe in. It feels that your individuality and how you identify begin to clash. Now, how you identify is a small part of your individuality because you can identify yourself as a 15-foot tall rabbit that decides to play video games and hop on one foot. If that's how you identify, that's perfectly fine. But it's only one small part of your individuality. Now, once your, be- once your beliefs take full c- control to where it feels somewhat cultish, in my opinion, if you let the 
ideas of the subculture that you're conformed to take control and you have no sense of self self sorry a little dry in here still but I think you understand where I'm coming from be an individual you can fit into the subcultures because it builds who you are but do not put so much stock on the label of conformity exercise your rights as an individual believe how you want to believe love how you want to love do not put yourself in a position where you lose sight of who you are sorry about that I had a quick text message I had to answer even though that I am recording this I can edit that comment out at any given time once more here at Cheshire's place this is real now once in a while you may hear me grunt and say a couple of negative words but I'll try to keep it as PG as much as possible especially for our younger listeners out there so <clears throat> As humans, we are allowed to feel and react however we want within our path of being an individual, um, going through self-identifying conformity. So this is a small little homework for everyone that's listening to my melodious voice. Take the time to just review your life leading up to this point review that when I want to grow up phase of your life review your junior high and high school phase when you began trying to identify yourself further as an individual and what cliques and subcultures you fit into even whenever you're in college in high school Review how these paths of self-discovery as an individual have affected you to this point. And realize that how you live your life right now is perfectly okay because it is who you want to be. It is what you have established for yourself and if you love yourself for it and other people love you for it, then you must be on the right path. So before we end this, and I apologize if it sounded a little ranty, but after messing up on recording the first time and saving it, and also being extremely passionate about this subject,